In this video, I'll show how to make a coded puzzle. These puzzles have grids rather similar to cryptic or quick grids. The difference is that every letter of the alphabet is used, and each square has a number in it, and each number corresponds to a different code. So 13 is one letter, 17 is another letter, 12 is another letter. And they also sometimes have these hint letters to get people started. And then the solver just has to figure out which letter is which number by using the pattern of the numbers in the grid. Okay, so to make this kind of puzzle, you go to the new puzzle window and select the coded template in the bottom right of these options here. The procedure then is very similar to creating a cryptic or quick puzzle. There's a separate long video on that with details, but also about manual grid designing. Here I'll just make a 15 by 15 standard puzzle and choose a grid pattern. As with cryptic and quick, I can design the grid pattern manually if I want to, but here I'm just going to use a provided grid pattern. That, that one will do. So I'll select that grid pattern, and then you can either put words in yourself or autofill. So I'll just autofill to make a complete puzzle immediately. The program has automatically fit words into the grid, and you should see that every letter of the alphabet is used at least once. So there's an X here and a Z here and so on. You can refill from the beginning to see other fills and accept when you're happy. You can view the puzzle by clicking on the puzzle on the toolbar here and that will show you the actual puzzle that the solver will see. And you see that at the moment there are no hint letters. The solution doesn't have numbers in, just shows you the solution. So if I wanted to give some hint letters to get the solver started, uh, I can go to grid menu, code hint letters. So here I can set which letters I want to be given as hints. So I could use say LIG to make it relatively easy and click OK. So the program then highlights these letters in the grid. I could then make all of these squares visible in the puzzle as a hint by going to square properties and selecting letter visible in puzzle. Alternatively, if you don't want to just show all of them, uh, you might want to just do LIG here and only show three, which is slightly more conventional in most cases. You could clear that selection and then just select these three letters here. Go to square properties, this icon on the toolbar, and select letter visible in puzzle. You can change the color and other things about the properties of this square if you want to, to make it emphasized. Click OK. So in this edit view, it's shown in blue just so you can see which letters are visible. If I go to the puzzle view, you'll now see we have just the letters in these three squares. The code hint letters will appear in the solution grid below the puzzle. So if I print this out, I go File, Print. So here I can print or save a PDF of the puzzle. And the option here is to include a code grid. So if I do the puzzle, that will be just like I just viewing it on screen. If I select code grid, that will also put a little handy grid below the main grid for the solver to put their code solution into. So if I preview this, you will see that you end up with a puzzle up here and then this grid at the bottom and the letters L, I, G have been inserted in the corresponding numbers to get the solver started. If you want to fill this kind of grid yourself, you can do that. So if I go to a, a blank grid like this, I can put a cursor anywhere in it and go to words, fill grid and choose whichever word list I like, change standard options, and if I've got the pro grid filler, I can use manual word selection to choose each word at once in exactly the same way. So the only difference from a normal fill is that you have to enforce that every letter of the alphabet is used at least once. And the way to do that is to check this box here, which says pangrammatic fill. And you can see that because we started with the coded template, that setting is automatically set for us here. Then you just click fill, and then it will fill it exactly as it did before. If you're making puzzles 
in a different language that's not English, or perhaps you want to make a special puzzle using some extra letters, you can go to clue properties and then language specific. This is where you set the alphabet, which determines which letters have to be used at least once in the fill. So for foreign languages, you just change those to the relevant letters you want to be used. Obviously, you have to make sure that you have a word list that actually has all those letters in. So this kind of puzzle can be printed, exported to PDF, exported to other files, or exported as an interactive web puzzle in much the same way as any other puzzle. And that's about it for making coded puzzles.